This is a question for um, Professor Siripan. Early on in your presentation, you gave us some figures uh, regarding the support in Bangkok for Democratic Party versus Poor Thai. Democrats came out on top, but in the rural areas, the opposite was the case. However, in the provinces, the urban areas in the provinces, your figures were 46 for Poor Thai and 40 for the Democrat Party. So uh, it seems to me that uh, maybe it's not so much an urban-rural divide we're talking about here, it's more of a divide between Bangkok and the rest of the country. So uh, looking ahead to another one of your slides later on, when you looked at the reasons for electing, uh, um, the, the, the reasons given for electing of image were a figure of five for Bangkok against two or one in the rest of the country. So maybe that might be interpreted as perhaps Bangkok is a triumph of style over substance. Thank you. Sorry, could you just identify yourself? I'm sorry, Ian Hollingworth, retired UK teacher. Thank you. I remember being very struck when I first saw the Reds uh, demonstrating here. Somehow, stupidly expected lots of young people. Not at all. It was overwhelmingly elderly people. And the question is why? First time mass mobilization of elderly people. And it seemed to me it's something that ought to be cleared up if one considers the modern history of Isan which was a very strong base for the Communist Party. And later when that was wrecked, they were completely under the control of people with money from Bangkok, uh, Chapaw and all that. And that was all sitting there waiting for the moment when it could come back. Is that not right or not? Norbert Ropers, Prince of Songkhla University, Patani. I was inspired, Ajahn Titinan, by you mentioning the regional patterns of party preferences. And I'm wondering if one compares the case of Thailand with similar democracies in transition, why is there not a stronger tendency to translate this regional pattern of uh, party preferences into solutions for regional uh, problems like in the Deep South. So why does the consistent preference for the Democratic Party not translate in this party engaging for solving the conflict in the Deep South? And on the other hand, why does the consistent preference in the North East not translate into addressing more effectively the development challenges in that region. And in general, I'm wondering if you could comment on the interaction between the electoral system, the democracy development, and regionalization. Um, the first and second, I will answer the first and second questions uh, at the same time. I think the urban and rural divide is very obvious, uh, maybe because uh, plainly because um, the rural people tend to get more benefits from the policies. And as for uh, the style versus substance of the Bangkok, I, I think I agree. But uh, more than that, maybe um, if we look at um, the Bangkokians' pattern of voting behavior, they tend to uh, give more importance on um, the trend in Thai Niyom, the popular trend, the popular trend of uh, of the parties itself and the uh, the party image. So that I think the Democrats serve well for for uh, the Bangkokian image uh, of the middle class, uh, the good, uh, eloquent in speaking English, uh, the uh, the uh, image of clean, but uh, uh, in reality, it is a different thing. Uh, as far as and Ben's um, uh, remark, I, I think I agree. Um, the movement of el elderly people uh, in 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 uh, the Thai political process, I, I think that too. Um, simple explanation that I, I have here, I I, I have not done uh, research on that yet. Why uh, the supporters of uh, the Tarak Thai, so-called Tarak Thai, uh, based mostly on uh, the older people, the older generation. I think first of all, uh, because uh, they stay, the, the older generation of the Thai people, the farmers and the workers, they stay at, in that place. Uh, and they benefited a lot from uh, the concrete of Thai policy, especially healthcare. 
that moratorium and so on. And with Ajahn Ben's remark about uh, the legacy of the communist ideology, I think that's very important. And also the leftover of the 1973 and 1976 ideology, I think that have some impacts. But uh, I, will, I will look further on that and uh, maybe a, another research is required. Thank you. When you said regionalism, you mean East Asia? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, in this, you know, Thailand, it works on the poor, right? Uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't work on the rule of law, and uh, it's not a merit-driven society. It's, uh, it's relationships. Um, so the Southerners, uh, then this is something I don't have a definitive answer. They have voted uh, consistently, consistently, time and again, for the Democrat Party. Tarot Thai tried to break that uh, bond, um, but of course it turned out to be a disaster. Uh, when Thaksin uh, went in there and disbanded this uh, infrastructure that they had and uh, in fact uh, contributed to or even sparked uh, the Malay Muslim uh, insurgency, the, 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 the return, the recurrent. Uh, and uh, so I don't have an answer for you. I think that uh, yes, uh, the, the policies should, uh, they should connect the dots and the Thai should come up with policies that cater to the, to the South. But on the other hand, uh, uh, they have tried, uh, and the Democrats, I think, have not tried as hard as poor Thai, perhaps, uh, but trying to win the Northeast and the North, and Democrats really have to camp out there. They really have to do a number of things. Uh, poaching, yes, poaching, uh, and they have to, uh, uh, they have to spend the time immersed uh, in that area. Um, so these guys in the leadership, they never really spend that much time there. Now, the regional, uh, the regional implications are uh, fascinating because, in fact, we see now from the Arab Spring to Southeast Asia um, and elsewhere that entrenched in, in, re regimes, incumbent regimes that have been entrenched for a long time have much more difficulty lasting. Right, uh, two, three decades of uh, rule, even more. Um, you just, it's just difficult to maintain an entrenched regime. Uh, and we see this all over, and now uh, Syria is the most dramatic case. For Thailand's case, of course, we've had a regime that I really kind of think of as a, uh, a Cold War constructed, Cold War driven, uh, Cold, Cold War uh, serving uh, regime. And it was a, in my view, I think that many would disagree, I think it, w it had its uh, purposes in the past. I think it uh, enabled us to have economic development that we have, and it kept uh, communism at bay, but it came at a very high cost, of, co of course, a lot of repression, uh, abuses of uh, human rights. Um, but that is all gone now. So it's a post-Cold War, you have a Cold War fighting machine. Uh, in the 21st century, and you have all this friction, and that's why we see these manifestations and machinations. So that's all we have, that we just have to recalibrate uh, with uh, the willingness of the key um, parties involved. May I add to, to that, maybe, I don't know if uh, this is interesting uh, or not, uh, Patani and Stoon, which is the two uh, almost provinces in, in the south, and actually they voted for the candidates from other parties, not the Democrats. It's Matapum and uh, Chattai Patani, if I remember. But for the party list, they voted for the, the Democrat. So I think this is very interesting. Thank you for the presentations. They are very, very informative. My name is Dorothy Guerrero. I am from Focus on the Global South. Uh, we are based here in the Social Research Institute. I'm from the Philippines, and, and I'm very, very interested on the presentation of Achan Siripan, especially on the vote buying, because this is something that we Filipinos are very, very familiar with. And um, when it comes to vote buying, some of the researchers and studies done in the Philippines also shows that when people sort of sell their votes or, they, or when they accept money in exchange of their votes, these are rational decisions. They have various reasons as you showed in your research why they're doing that. But it also shows that there's machinery behind the vote, body, vote buying. So I want to know uh, in, in the Thai con context, what in terms of this machinery where how people get the money and and who's delivering the money uh is it also included in your study how the different parties fare in that kind of machinery uh 
because it seems that everybody buy votes or, or sell votes here as well. Uh, so that's that's my first question. And for Achantitinan, in in when you mentioned about all these dilemmas of, of Thai democracy, uh, it's quite depressing. But I think <laughs> there's also that space for making because uh, there's those percentage in her in her uh, uh, research that shows people think people people choose rationally, but how can how can these progressive thinking become popular, and how can you be, make the popular more progressive, which I think is a big challenge for all emerging democracies. Hello, I'm Bev Frankel. I've lived here for many years. I've been a teacher in this community. Uh, my question <coughs> is related to Dr. Tina Nunn's um, comment about reform of the party. I'm wondering if there is a way in which there are rules for good sportsmanship that come with losing. Losing a game, you are supposed to be a good sport about it. Are there rules for an opposition party when you lose to become a good opposition party that would make a more stable situation? One last question over here. No. Anyone else? The last question? Yes, please. Hello, I'm Tipawan Dusha, for I'm um, freelance li uh, freelance uh, translator and writer in German uh, language. I have a very short question to Ajahn Sripan according to her study. Uh, you uh, mentioned the gender aspect, and I would like to uh, to to need, uh, to know more uh, reason why women vote uh, Democrat Party and men more uh, fertile Thai Party. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. I will ask the panelists uh, to respond and to, we'd li I'd like to conclude in seven minutes, so we'll end by 45, so people can get lunch. Um, and Ajahn Tamada, if you'd also like to respond to any of the questions or any last comments, please feel free to do so. All right. Um, well, about um, political machine to vote buying, I, I think I, but some of uh, my colleagues might be able to answer this question better than me. Uh, but my assumption is that um, um, who who are the people who deliver the money uh, in in Thai? That use the word canvasser or canan. But I mean, who are these people? I think they can be anyone from village headsmen, uh, teachers in that community, even the monks. But but I think if start a straightforward relationship like that, I think it's uh, become more and more that it has to be someone that the community can trust, because. Um, Selling board is not considered an, an just exchange of money, but it's also an exchange of, of hospitality, of kindness, and uh, of, of um, the commitment that you will look after us after the election. So I think it's, it's not as straightforward as selling and uh, exchange money and payment. And uh, recently, uh, what, I've heard, what I have heard is that um, the acts of, of this kind of exchange is not only in terms of money, but in terms of um, getting your students to school, uh, taking you to um, vacation. For people from the north, they were seen at the, the, the sea, or they take them to the sea, people from the south uh, getting to the north like that. So it's become uh, more and more complex and it's it's been a relationship between the community leaders and the people in that community not only just a direct selling of words as for <laughs> your question oh well um, it's interesting that the result in 2011 election is parallel with the 2007 election uh, during 2007 election, if you remember, Kun Samak Sun Tarawet was um, the, uh, the candidate for the premier. Uh, at that time, I would say that um, most of 
the people who are supporter, who were supporters of uh, the People's Power Party back then, didn't like Kun Samak that much. He was not so popular, uh, and Kun Thaksin obviously he's handsome. I mean, my students like him a lot. Uh, so I, I guess that's my assumption back then. But for this this election in particular, Kun Ying Lak was very. Uh, Beautiful. I mean, uh, he has a good image. Uh, uh, so, I, for for me, I start to think that maybe the image itself doesn't count that much as compared to uh, the benefits of the policies that uh, the male tend to to uh, have a bond with with uh, the poor ties. But as for the Democrat, I I still believe that the image, the qualities, and the personality of Kun Apisik. Uh, lead to uh, a support from, from the female gender. But I mean, this is just my assumption. I don't have any crowd studies to support this. I try to do it next time if I have the fund. <laughs> Thank you. OK, uh, a couple of questions. We're running out of time. Sportsmanship is a, a rare commodity in Thai politics. They really, they're not. Uh, they may play sports, but they're not very sportsmanship-like. Um, the opposition party goes both ways. I think that Putai was also uh, uh, not uh, decent in his uh, in his behavior when it was in opposition. And we have too many veto players in Thai politics. Right? We have uh, once you lose uh, power, then you want to have a. Uh, get the power back, of course, uh, like in other countries. But then you also want to have a kind of a veto to prevent some things from happening. And, and we have too many players like that. And that means that we need a more consolidated system and a, uh, a new kind of consensus so that people will agree to and, don't ve and, and not veto uh, everything that comes out of government. Reform, as a last, uh, my last comment to this last question, to, uh, is about who is going to do the well, this is our predicament, really. Reform is a cliche. We say it all the time. Uh, I think that uh, the dilemma is that if you lose for the pro-coup coalition establishment forces of uh, power, if they lose an inch, they could lose a foot and a mile. So making one concession is very slippery. But making no concessions, you know, by the time they're ready to make some, they'll have to make a mile, a few miles. Uh, and that is the dilemma. So in Thailand, we don't have, uh, as far as I can see, a honest broker out of the fray, above the fray, truly, uh, to undertake, to sanction, stage this kind of process. If you can come, up, come into, into Thailand from outside, with some credibility, stature, and, and acceptance by all sides, and you say, look, here's my, here's a proposal. Uh, you make 23 concessions, and that's it. These are the concessions, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And after this, uh, everybody agrees that you, you don't have to make any more concessions. These concessions will last for the next 20 years. Uh, what do you think about it? If you can get that kind of agreement from the different stakeholders involved, uh, then, Maybe they, we could have some kind of a package reform. Uh, 